Hi guys. It is an absolutely spectacularly gorgeous, I do mean over the top beautiful day. Here in the collapse of global industrial civilization out here in the Point Lonesome Swamp, deep in the oasis of freedom on this glorious, I believe it is Thursday, January 20th. 2022. I think they're resetting the hands of the doomsday clock right about now. I'll have to find out how that goes. But while we're waiting to hear where we sit on the doomsday clock, how close to midnight, uh, I'm going to do what I try to do each Thursday, and that's check in uh, with our old friends at oilprice.com to see how the uh, oil investors and big oil and whatnot are doing to save the planet. You know, just to give a little bit of balance to all of this, uh, this mainstream media apocaloptimistic hopium meme that this planet is weaning itself off fossil fuels. <clears throat> so we're gonna look at how the planet is weaning itself off fossil fuels here uh, in early 2022. Uh, I do appreciate the breadth of honesty that you have to go over to oilprice.com to find. But I'm gonna put this little dog down and he's gonna go set the doomsday clock for that squirrely like that. And uh, all right, guys, good God, but before we start talking about oil, let's talk about electricity, which is kind of like talking about uh, gas and coal. All right, the numbers are in. Global electricity demand surged 6% in 2021. <clears throat> Rebounding economies and extreme weather last year led to a 6% jump in global electricity demand, the largest percentage increase since 2010. <coughs> Soaring power demand as the world recovered from the 2020 lockdowns and enormous strain on the coal and natural gas supply chains, pushing up wholesale electricity prices. <clears throat> Although renewables continue to grow, coil, coil, there you go, coal and gas-fired electricity generation reached record levels last year contributing to a new all-time high in annual <clears throat> global carbon dioxide emissions from the electricity sector, the International Energy Agency said. Uh, <clears throat> Last year, in 2021, the industrial sector contributed the most to demand growth, followed by the commercial and services sector. Uh, despite all the net zero pledges and push for greater use of renewables, coal met more than half of the increase in global electricity demand with coal-fired electricity generation reaching an all-time peak. Coal power generation rose by 9% last year for the fastest growth since 2011, propelled by the exceptional demand. Yes. Uh, overall, CO2 emissions from the electricity sector went up by nearly 7% to a new record high. Yep, yep, yep. Uh, 
there you go. So of course, while uh, all that is going on, what uh, is the UN <clears throat> chief Antonio Guterres, what is he screaming about over there at the World Economic Forum in Davos uh, as coal burning reaches new heights? Stop building coal plants now, UN chief implores, yes. The world should stop building new coal plants and phase out those already in existence, the Secretary General of the UN, Antonio Guterres, said at the World Economic Forum. Yes. <clears throat> in a special address at the forum, Guterres said that the first priority must be a targeted phase out of coal. No new coal plants can be built. Yep, yep, yep. <coughs> this is not the first time the chief of the UN has called for the end of coal. Last year, yes, uh, last year, you know, before coal burning uh, reached all-time record highs, you know, that last year. <clears throat> last year, at an address to the powering past coal alliance, Guterres said, once upon a time, coal brought cheap electricity to entire regions and vital jobs to communities. Those days are gone. <laughs> Those days are gone. Yep, yep, yep. Uh, we can certainly see how those uh, <clears throat> days are gone. Now, last week, I pretty much had this same story about the International Energy Agency. Uh, we were all waiting with bated breath with the uh, no shit Sherlock prediction, but the numbers, the report finally came in uh, two days ago. And what does the International Energy Agency say about <clears throat> the demand for oil forecast? IEA turns bullish on oil and raises its demand growth forecast. The IEA raised its demand growth estimates by 200,000 barrels per day for both 2021 and 2022. <clears throat> the market is tighter than expected. Yes. Uh, all right. <clears throat> Global oil demand defied gloomy expectations from just a month ago to withstand the Omicron wave with much less disruption than expected, the International Energy Agency said on Wednesday, raising its demand growth estimates by 200,000 barrels per day you know, for this year. Uh, <clears throat> Demand increased by 1.1 million barrels per day to 99 million barrels per day in the fourth quarter of 2021, defying expectations of a serious hit to consumption due to the Omicron wave. Yes. Uh... <laughs> Uh, last week, the IEA said that oil demand had proven to be more resilient to the effects of the Omicron variant spread than the IEA had expected. Uh, <clears throat> 
guys it, it's just more of the same I got a lot to go through here uh, we're gonna come back to uh, we're just gonna keep going with oil then we're gonna look at some of these renewables all right <clears throat> what's going on right here in our own oil soaked country Permian oil output hits new record Yes, crude oil production on the Permian Shale Play reached a record high last month, averaging 4.92 million barrels per day, the Energy Information Administration reported. <clears throat> but the top shale play in the United States is seen boosting oil output even higher to 4.996 million barrels per day this month and crossing 5 million barrels per day in February. <clears throat> Bloomberg noted in a report on the news that this makes the Permian alone a bigger oil producer than any OPEC members except Saudi Arabia. So uh, the Permian shale out there in West Texas and Eastern New Mexico, the, the only one <clears throat> bigger now is Saudi Arabia. This is how Joe Biden is uh, weaning this country off of fossil fuels. Uh, <clears throat> here's a hilarious one. United Arab Emirates says climate talks should include input from oil and gas sector. Wow, do you think so? The COP28 climate summits slated to be held in Abu Dhabi in 2023 should include input from experts and professionals from the oil and gas industry because the world cannot simply unplug from the energy system as it is today, said some sultan. Uh, <clears throat> quote, we cannot simply unplug from the energy system of today and we cannot do this with a flip of a switch. Yes. Uh, yeah, you know, should include input. Well, <clears throat> what were we reporting uh, just a couple of weeks ago that there were more oil and gas lobbyists at COP26 than there were, there were more fossil fuel uh, lobbyists and whatnot at COP26 than there were any other single group of lobbyists. And my guess is that is probably a true statement for every single climate talk uh, in, in, in the UN's history and you better believe uh, that the oil and gas industry uh, will be fully recognized at all climate talks, thinking of all of these BS scenarios to hoodwink the clueless morons uh, that there is going to be any voluntary transition away from fossil fuels. All right. Uh, I'm going to get back to that. So uh, we were talking about the IEA. So how does OPEC look at uh, what is their oil demand forecast for this year. 
OPEC sees robust demand and well-supported oil market in 2022. Yes, the effect of the Omicron variant on global oil demand has been weaker than expected. <clears throat> yes, and the oil market is set to be well supported throughout 2022, despite monetary tightening policies. Yes, OPEC said yesterday, leaving its demand growth estimate for this year unchanged uh, in its closely watched oil market report today, OPEC kept its oil demand growth forecast for 22 unchanged at 4.2 million barrels per day. Meanwhile, average global oil consumption, you know, which is now at 99 million barrels today, is set to reach 100.8 million barrels per day this year, exceeding pre-COVID levels. Yes, the Omicron impact was indeed mild and short-lived and did not make any significant changes to demand forecast. All right, next. Uh, what is going on up there to our neighbors to the north in Canada? Trans Mountain Pipeline back to normal operations after disruption. The Trans Mountain oil pipeline returned to normal operating pressure over the weekend following a month and a half of operations at reduced capacity after the infrastructure was shut for 21 days as a precaution during rainstorms in British Columbia in mid-November. You know, uh, they had to shut down the oil pipeline because of these extreme weather events being caused by oil pipelines. Uh, <clears throat> and Trans Mountain Pipeline the only operating system carrying crude oil to Canada's west coast is back up and running. All right. So how much oil? 300,000 barrels per day running through that oil pipeline. The Trans Mountain Pipeline is a vital piece of oil infrastructure, shipping oil, crude oil from Alberta, you know, what we're talking about there, west and to U.S. refineries. Uh, <clears throat> it is the only pipeline that carries oil from Alberta to the West Coast and has become the subject of a fierce debate between the oil province and British Columbia because of the expansion plans that would significantly increase its capacity. Uh, Trans Mountain, currently owned by the Canadian federal government, is expected to provide Western Canadian crude oil producers with an additional 590,000 barrels per day of crude oil transportation capacity. There you go. So they're trying to get it roughly from three, they're, they're trying to triple the oil going from the Alberta tar sands. Uh, now, <clears throat> I'm just guessing here, it doesn't talk about this. My guess is that China is all over this one. Now, of course, a lot of the oil is going to U.S. refiners, as it says, but my guess is uh, 
it's winding up on the Pacific Ocean. Take a guess where it is going to. All right, from Canada to Libya. Libya oil production rebounds. Libya's crude oil production has rebounded to 1.2 million barrels per day, according to the country's oil minister, Mohammed Aoun. Yes. Said that Libya's crude out oil output was back to normal. Yes. All right. From Libya to Kazakhstan, <clears throat> Kazakhstan's oil production fully recovered after unrest. I love that word, unrest. Daily oil production in OPEC, in OPEC producer Kazakhstan rebounded strongly at the end of last week, suggesting that output has now fully recovered from the unrest earlier this month. Yes, so how much oil? Uh, how much oil? Hello? Nowhere does it say uh, how much oil that means. But anyway, I think we get the message, so uh, let's look at a long as we're over here. Uh, how about nuclear power? How is nuclear power uh, demand and future shaping up in the good old USA? Most U.S. states see nuclear power as part of the green transition. The green transition. Yes. <clears throat> The majority of U.S. states and the District of Columbia see a future for nuclear power in their respective energy policies for a transition away from fossil fuels, a survey by the Associated Press showed. Two-thirds of all states and the District of Com Columbia say that in one form or another, nuclear power generation will be needed in the United States to meet the goals of a carbon-free grid by 2035 and net zero emissions by 2050. This is Energy Secretary Jennifer Grandholm. Uh, talking about the U.S. going net zero, quote, that means nuclear, that means hydropower, that means geothermal, that means obviously wind, and wind on and offshore, that means solar. There you go. Do you see a recurring theme in this? Uh, supply, 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 supply. Not one word about reducing energy demand. Every article, well, this is, you know, obviously, uh, this is a bunch of energy investors. Uh, not questioning the demand the global demand for every one of these planet-eating uh, industries going up, 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 up. So obviously, we're going to increase the supply of every one of these. Okay. Uh, so you will not be surprised that one of the hottest markets of 2022 is energy storage. If you want to, uh, you know, this entire website is dedicated 
to how to make a dollar off the collapse of a planet and investing in uh, what this is ta it's talking about batteries, uh, particularly electric vehicle batteries. Uh, will be one of the biggest ways to make money off the planet. But what is our we don't hear about our billionaire buddy Warren Buffett very often. What is Warren Buffett up to this week? Warren Buffett eyes largest wind power project ever in the U.S. Going in in Iowa for whatever reason. Warren Buffett's investment firm Berkshire Hathaway has proposed a plan for a renewable energy project comprising wind and solar power that would cost $3.9 billion to build. The Wind Prime project stands to potentially be the single largest wind project ever built in the U.S. However, there have been such massive projects proposed before that have never gotten to the finish line, so there is a long way to go for this project. <laughs> yep, yep, yep. Do I have any more? Have we hit a... I could go on with this. Let's see, did I miss any that I... Oh, well, that's enough for today, guys. I think we all get it. And uh, I have to wrap this up because your old uh, real estate investor collapsitarying is selling Crazy Crane Campground today. This is the last day I will own this gorgeous piece of real estate and I will hand the dream over to another man I'm gonna be here till April but uh, oh well the global industrial economy grinds on and I must play my part Get out there and play your own part in the global industrial economy while well, you still can. Bye, guys.